Hey guys, it's me, Dofnatic, and I am uh, more than thrilled to finally, finally be announcing publicly, although pretty much everyone who watches this really knows it exists, the Pokemon Premier League. This is my little baby, which I've created with, um, 12, uh, not 12, I'm the 12, 11 other fantastic people. Now, um, it was just an idea when the GBA went down. I honestly thought it was... I never really got into the GBA. Because um, I don't really understand the American style of things they use. Like, whatever, drafting methods. I know now because we've used a similar drafting method. But with a kind of like a, a twist that Europeans might be more um, used to. With football obviously being a bigger sport over here. But we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but obviously the GBA went down. And... Um, I kind of wanted to get in on the fact that I I toyed doing this with other people before, but it never came to um, anything really. Um, one being Sizz, and obviously he's never here anymore. One being Grav, and obviously he left and is now Slam. Um, so I thought there was a hole, there was a gap, and I had people come on board. People really liked my concept because it's different to what the GBA offers. Um, and I've already got so many ideas on how to expand this. Um, this league. Now, one of the questions that we get obviously the most, I'm going to say this right now, is how do I join? Simple answer, you don't. This season is pretty much a test run season. Obviously, there's still going to be a competitive edge to it. We've all drafted our teams now. Each individual person will be uploading their drafting uh, pretty much today or tomorrow or relatively soon in the future, I assume. But it's not open to public yet. Now, the reason why it's not open to public yet is because we only have one division. This is based on the English football, um, I can't think what it's called, structure. So at the moment we have the Premier League. In English football structure, there are probably about 10 divisions lower than that. Obviously we're not going to have 10 divisions, but if I introduce the Championship, which is the equivalent of the second division, um, Premier League being the equivalent of the top division, um, Obviously, then we can have more people, and there'll be promotions from Division 2 up to Division 1, and relegations from Division 1 to Division 2. So, obviously, there'll be a real competitive edge into it then, but what I've done is, this isn't too open for public. I kind of publicised it a bit to get a few people involved, but I, these, are with, these are with people who I pretty much knew existed or was friends with anyway. So, I was quite comfortable for letting them um, join. I've also become pretty decent pals over this. We were playing Cards Against Humanity last night, god damn, that was... That was that was edgy as fuck. That was, um, so yeah. Basically, that's the kind of birth. That's the child. That's my concept that has now finally come to fruition, and it's looking like people have got on board. I mean, we've got 120 pr followers pretty much on our Twitter in two days. So I'll leave a link to that in the description if you don't follow it. We don't have a community channel as of yet. It's something we're toying with. Probably bring it in for season two when there's more teams. Um, we did toy with the concept of interviews, but I thought instead of like me interviewing everyone, um, we could maybe talk to each other before game or something and upload it to each other's channels. I mean, there'll probably be a channel probably made relatively soon, but might not just be active this season, just so we can keep the name before someone else nicks it. Um, so, the people, I'm going to have to try and remember now, I have got the team listing here, there you go. The people participating in this season's Pokemon Premier League is myself for Tottenham Hot Esper. We have Shardy, also known as Surprise Butt Sex, on Twitter, and he is Bayern Munich. Um, Onesie Baynet, as some of you may know, also known as Alex, with Celta Dino. Titos, aka Tito Station, is here with Sport Lisbon Brafica. He's bringing his uh, Portuguese flair to his team name there. We have Raikwin as the fifth member of the Pokemon Premier League with Nottingham Forest's Curse. Then we have Erasmus with Miami Rotom Heat. I can't. I always say that. I can't say his name right. I, I just can't. Ethan, I'll just call him Ethan. We have Fred Ford the second, also known as Oscar, with Berusia Dublade. We have Mighty Mamoswine with Orlando City Caballions. We have the Shroom Raver with Parasect Germain. I think that has to be one of my favourite team names, or Germain, however you want to say it. Then we have in the 10th slot, the Slyro with Pittsburgh Pyro. 11th spot, we had to get a woman in here invol uh, involved somehow, because otherwise it would be a bit of a sausage fest. We have the based Ellie with Teddington Teddy Ursus. And then the 12th man... For the league, we only had 12, there'll be 11 matches this season, 
because we thought it might be too much to do two battles each, is Layson MC with the Philadelphia Flygons. Now, I'm not going to go into depth too much about each of their teams. You can go watch their own respective videos about that, because I don't know what they thought about when they were doing their selection process and whatnot. Um, but you're going to be hearing mine relatively shortly. Now, I'm going to go over the drafting rules. Actually, I'm going to go over all of the rules that we've come up with. Obviously, like I said, it's the first season. It's a test season. There's going to be lots of loopholes. There's going to be lots of mistakes. We're going to learn from the mistakes and hopefully made it a bit more of a solid tournament the next time around, which is why I haven't opened it up to public yet. Obviously, people... I mean, it's guaranteed people will come and moan and say something stupid. So, that's why I haven't opened it to public. Anyway... Team drafting rules. It is important you bear these in mind when you see the squads that have been picked. I'm sure people would have rather picked Blastoise instead of War Turtle, but there's a reason why Ellie had to pick War Turtle. For example, for example, I mean it's a great choice. Um, each team will take it in turns to pick one Pokemon at a time. This was the drafting, and it was randomised. Unfortunately for me, I was right near the end, so. <laughs> It was randomised at the start, we were all kind of there to witness it. Fair enough, it's the only fair way of doing it really. A squad must have a minimum of 8 Pokemon and a maximum of 11. So, like my team, I only have te 10 team members because I ran out of money to buy any more. But, I'm well within my squad limits. So, I'm fine, I'm fine. For example, if you get 10 Pokemon and happy with your squad, you can skip your final initial pick for more financial freedom. Now, you'll get into financial freedom in a bit. Pokemon tiers will be based on Smogun tiers. This is important because the pricing of Pokemon was based on tiers, which is why the question was raised, why Hydreigon costs less, uh, more, yeah, cost, was it more or less? I can't remember, than Mega Bayonet. So, that's why. Um, any, ch any changes to the smoking tiers will affect people's ability to pay... Pa right, these are outdated. Some of these are outdated. It's been changed. So actually, we can ignore that one, I think, for now. No Ubers as per smoke on are allowed, apart from the ones which we have unbanned for this first season. Now, obviously, we might go back and... Um, un or ban them or unban some Pokemon that we did ban. So I'm going to quickly go over them. I know some of you guys will be very opinionated about this. So please bear in mind it was a group decision, not mine. So we decided to ban both the Mega Lattes. Now, I was for uh, banning them, as was the majority of the whole of the group. So I don't feel so bad about banning them. But honestly, I can't remember why I've now gone and banned them. Um, We've got Kyron Black is not banned. Obviously, he's OU, and he's he's not fast, but he hits like a fucking truck. Um, Cresselia was a no ban. It was actually an even, and um, I actually voted to ban it, but you'll see why that's controversial soon enough. We decided to ban Mega Metagross. Now, this was a weird one, because obviously, o a lot of OU felt that it should have been banned, but it didn't get, or Smogan, it didn't get enough votes to ban it to Ubers. But I think everyone here, it's a 9-3 to three vote where people decided, no, we're not having Metagross in this. Obviously, I mean, he might come back for the next series, who knows. Uh, Genesect is staying banned. Mega Mawile we have unbanned, and everyone voted no ban. I don't think people thought about this because, including myself, I mean, it's not fast, but it's fucking scary. It's Mega Mawile. It was banned to Ubers for a reason. It's the fair. It's the Dragon Slayer. And um, I'm pretty sure like all the main dragons have been drafted. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a threat. Aegislash, Slash we kept banned. That was very close. It was uh, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. seven to five. So obviously, uh, if it was the other way, unbanning Age Slash. I honestly don't see it as too much of a threat. Um, Mega Latios already said Deoxy's speed was banned. Um, Deoxy's defense was banned. Um, I was for banning it, but thinking about it now, I'm not too sure why. And we voted on also having a Mega Draft, and we decided not. We could just draft. You don't have to use a Mega. There's actually one team in this tournament that has not got a Mega. Everyone else does, I believe. And then we had a vote on how to price the BL tiering Pokemon, but you don't need to know too much about that. Um... Theoretically, there is only one of each Pokemon in existence. For example, if I pick Talonflame, no one else can have Talonflame. 
When there's more than one division, there can be one Pokemon per division. I pick Talonflame, someone in Division 2 can pick Talonflame, but there cannot be two Talonflames in Division 2. Strictly one Mega Evolution per team. These Pokemon cost considerably more than the other team, uh, other Pokemon in their tier. Mega Pokemon are classified separately as from their originals. For example, I can ha I have, uh, I don't, I can have Mega Sceptile, and Raikwin can have Normal Sceptile. Normal Sceptile is just cheaper. But he isn't allowed to Mega Evolve his, and I can only Mega Evolve mine. I can't then take the Sceptile I off and give it a Life Orb, for example. Um, a Pokemon's position, I called it position, the Pokemon's set can be freely changed at any time apart from Mega Stones. For example, Choice Band Swampert can be in one match, and you can freely switch it to Bulky Leftover Swampert uh, for the next game, unless... You bought Mega Swampert. It has to hold the set, uh, the Swampert type. Obviously, you can build a bulky one or an offensive one. Feel free. IVs, EVs, nature. Anything can change apart from Mega Stones if it's holding one. Um, yeah, they may freely switch moves, EVs, etc., but must retain the Mega Stone. And Pokemon are allowed historical generation moves, e.g. Defog, Togekiss. So, that kind of explains some of the rules for team drafting. The main reason why some people have had to think about going into the lower tiers is there was a budget of £100 million. Now, I'm going to quickly go over the pricing. We, we had a vague pricing list, which meant you couldn't really... Or, no, like I said, you could... You had to have eight between 8 and 11 in your squad, which means you can't have 8 OUMONs. You have to think about it. You have to think about your prices and your payments and your leftover money, because there is a transfer market where you can buy other Pokemon off people, or the free agents list, which we'll go over at some point. Um, so, it was really important we got the pricing right, and I actually think we've nailed it on the head first time. There might be some um, discussions, I guess, later on, because some things were a steal at their price, some things were probably overpriced, but that's for, that's for another time. So generally, all OU Pokemon were 15 million. All UU Pokemon were 10 million. So you could run a squad of UU if you really wanted. Um, all RU Pokemon are 6 million. All NU Pokemon are 4 million. And all PU Pokemon and below are 2 million. Now, Megas all had their own varied price. Um, they are all 20 million, apart from the following. Mega Blastoise was 16. Mega Alakazam was 16. For some reason, Mega Pinsir was 22. Mega Aerodactyl was 16. Mega Ampharos was 15. Mega Heracross is 18. Mega Houndoom is 16. Mega Tyranitar is 18. Mega Agron is 16. Mega Medicham is 16. Mega Bayonet was 14. Mega Absol is 16. Mega Garchomp is 16. Mega Obama Snow is 14. Mega Beedrill is 16. Mega Pidgeot is 16. Mega Steelix is 14. Mega Sharpedo is 16. Mega Glalie is 16. Mega Ordino is 10. Mega Diancy is 16. And Mega Camerupt is 14. Now, I know that's probably more than there are 20s, but there is one important reason as to why I think there's quite a lot of Megas that have not been chosen. For example, Mega Sharpedo. We have agreed as a group you have to Mega Evolve turn 1. Not turn 1 of the battle, um, or if you want to switch the Pokemon straight back out. If you intend on staying in with your Mega Pokemon, you have to Mega Evolve first turn. Which is why the thing, um, who, Mega Sharpedo obviously hasn't been picked because obviously it wouldn't benefit from speed boost. Um, who else would benefit? Sableye hasn't been drafted because obviously it can't make use of its prankster unless you have normal Sableye. Um, who else is there? Uh, I don't know if there's really any others that matter too much. Mega Gyarados obviously loses its ground immunity. Um, if it Mega Evolves first turn. So, there are some effects of that, but obviously none, well, none of them Pokemon I just mentioned have been drafted, so I don't think the Mega Rule will um, affect too many people. Um, what else is there to kind of tell you? Um, about the League itself, the scoring system, three points rewarded for a win, one for a draw, 
and zero for a loss. Um, a draw is considered, for example, if I win or technically win the game 6-1, it's a draw because no one technically won. There was not a winner because no one made the opponent's Pokemon all faint. It's a draw. However, we are using a KO system to differentiate people on the same points. It's called the kill, uh, I can't, the knockout difference. So in football, I don't know if it, how it works in, uh, American football and hockey. I assume hockey has it. Um, maybe even baseball has home, has runs, I don't know. But, um, for example, say me and Ellie are both on 25 points. We have one game left of the season, and it's the decider of the title. I have, I don't know, 40 KOs and 20 deaths. So deaths also come into play. So I have 40 KOs, I have 20 deaths. Overall, that leaves me a plus 20 KO um, differential. Ellie has got 40 kills and 20 deaths, 25 points, with a 20 kill death. Uh, differential. In our final games, I go ahead and win 6-0. Ellie goes ahead and wins 5-0. Ellie has a plus KO difference of 25. I have a plus KO difference of 26. Therefore, I win the title. Even if we're on the same points, I have got more KOs and less deaths. So therefore, I win. That's how we split. If someone I've just made this off the top of my head, and I'm sure the group will agree. If someone somehow ends up on the same kills, oh, and, oh, sorry, and also, if you end up on the same kill death, um, not kill death, knockout difference, the person with the most kills then wins. If you somehow have the same kills, the same deaths, and the same points, there will be a playoff. We'll call it a playoff, because I'm pretty sure that's what the Americans call it. We'll have a grand finale. We will have first versus second, because obviously there needs to be a game that can split the two. Um, I've explained the KO difference. If you forfeit the match, it will automatically be judged as a minus six KOs for the person who forfeits, and the loser and the winner, sorry, gets plus six. Even if you forfeit when it's 3v1. I don't condone forfeiting. Um, the outcome is strictly what the game states at the end of the battle, apart from the draws. For example, you use Explosion on your last Mon and kill the opponent's last Mon. Technically, the person who used Explosion loses because they die first. For example, Arcanine, or no, Darmanitan, no, that doesn't work. Arcanine uses Flare Blitz on Levani. Levani dies, Arcanine dies to Life Orb Recoil and Flare Blitz. You die after you've killed the Levani. So, technically, Arcanine wins. It's not a draw if it ends like that. Um, but I'm pretty sure it gives you a 1-0 anyway. Um, if there are two teams tied on points in the K difference, yeah, the division final. Okay, I have already thought of that. Um, if there are three plus teams, all I'd imagine highly unlikely with the same KO difference and league points. There will be a mini league formed or cup, whatever you want to decide, uh, whatever you want to call it, to decide the top two. And then between them, there will be a division final. So that's pretty much the rules of this. There is an influence of football, soccer in this league, which is why I really uh, liked it. And that's why everyone, I think, has really got on board of it so far, because it's different. Everyone's kind of taken American sports styles of uh, setting these leagues up. I've gone for the European one, and I think I honestly think this makes more sense. It just makes sense to me and people, and it worked out a treat in drafting the first time round. And anyway, I've been rambling on enough about this Pokemon Premier League. I know it's important I tell you what it's about and what the rules are, um, but hang on, I'm going to have to be back because the postman is here. Okay, I'm back. It was some electrician guy reading the electric meters for some reason. Um, so yes, what was I doing? I've just explained the Pokemon Premier League. Hopefully you guys get on board. Make sure you go follow the Twitter below. And I'll probably link everyone's channels who is in... No, I'll link, the, link their Twitters because they all have their YouTube channels and their Twitter bios anyway. To the participants. But I have already gone over them. <sighs> right. So the second important part of this video, 
uh, is what I'm sure most of you guys will want to know is my draft and my reasoning. Now, my draft, I consider it a strong draft. I took a stance which no one else really took with team selection. Everyone had a different kind of like idea on what they wanted to do. For example, once he went for a cheap mega and has built a very solid team on lower tier things and then just got a few massive threats such as Garchomp and Dragonite and Sylveon in there. But then he's also picked up things like Regirock, uh, Bronzong, Luminion, Reuniclus and Rampados for dirt cheap because of their tiering. So it's worked really well in his case. Uh, who else? Who went big money? Pittsburgh Pyro went big money straight away. Gliscor, Mega Pinsir, Arcanine, Starmie. That's over half his budget gone in the first four picks. Actually, how much is that? 30, 52, 62 million. You get 100 million. He's picked four mon and he spent 62 million. Um, so we've all gone different methods. I have kind of been quite consistent across the board. I've taken power from the middle-ish tiers for middle-ish price and then got a couple of OU powerhouses. So, or well, when I say OU, it's not. Um, I've just noticed something with my team, but I'm not going to bring it up now. Um, so, my team. I have drafted Mega Alakazam as my first mod. Now, we didn't have a separate Mega draft because apparently... Uh, Everyone picked a uh, Mega apart from the Orlando City Cobalions. Um, which is, is strange because when you see his team, everyone will be screaming as to why he hasn't picked a Sazen Mega. And we all done the same in the group chat when we were talking about the draft. We were like, why has he not picked a certain one? But I won't ruin it because it's not his team. Um, so I've gone for Mega Alakazam. Why have I gone for Mega Alakazam? I've never used it before, and I know it's probably not the best time, but I don't tend to take too many things seriously. I do want to win, obviously, I'm going to be competitive, but I want to use Mega Alakazam. It's got base, 150 speed, 175 special attack. Base 150 speed, I don't think there's many things in the whole entire game that can outspeed me, especially when no one has picked Ninjask, no one has picked Deoxy Speed because it's banned. It's going to be powerful. Another thing is it's so goddamn versatile with its moveset. I can change it up as much as I like, obviously. Um, I can obviously run Modest for power against bulkier teams. I can run Timid against teams that I know I need to have speed investment for. It gets what, Psychic, Psyshock, Focus Blast, Energy Ball, Shadow Ball, um, Encore, Protect, uh, not Protect, uh, Calm Mind, um, I don't know, Substitute. Because we're going to run Substitute Focus Punch Alakazam. No, I'm kidding. Um, but it's got such a great specially offensive move. I'm pretty sure it gets Dazzling Gleam as well. Which is nice, actually, because I've only just realised that. And I haven't got any fairies. So, actually, that's quite nice. Um, so, Zam is, a, is really good in that aspect. But, but what my main, I think, plus of Mega Alakazam is Trace. There are so many threats in this tier. It's unbelievable. For example, one team is a rain team. He's got Swift Swim users. I come in with Alakazam, Mega Evolve, get Swift Swim, get wrecked, mate. The only thing that could stop me is Aqua Jet. And to be fair, he'll probably run it on... I think he only has one Pokemon that can learn it. So once that's gone, it's good game. As much as. Um... Who else? I mean, I could trace adaptability. Someone's drafted Dragalge. I could trace adaptability. I could trace uh, Levitate. I could trace Protean from Kek. Someone picked Protean Kecleon. I could trace Magnet Pull or Sturdy from Magneton. I could pull... Did I say Sturdy? I can't remember if I have. I could pull Prankster. Prankster substitute to stop other Pranksters. I could pull uh, Gale Wings. Not that it would help. Scrappy could help with Focus Blast, while I'd have Shadow Ball as well. I could trace Solid Rock. I could trace Technician, not that I need Technician. I could trace Flash Fire. I could trace Water Absorb. I could trace Pixelate. I could trace Multi Scale. I could trace Pressure. 
I could trace... Uh, what else is there? Clear body. I could trace regenerator. I could trace dry skin. I could trace hydration. I could trace... Uh, what else? There's so many things I could trace, basically. Natural cure. Unaware. Uh, motor drive. Um, what else? Aerial 8. Competitive. Oh, that'd be nice. Marvel scale. No guard. Sheer force from Darmanitan. Serene grace from Togekiss. There's just so many things I could trace. And it makes me scared as to how powerful Megazam could be if used correctly. I haven't seen many people use him. And I don't think any of these guys have seen many people use him. So I think there might be a surprise factor um, with Alakazam, which is why I'm really looking forward to using it. Um, that's that's the first Pokemon. Second Pokemon was due to a combination of reasons. One, how the hell it's you, you, no one has any clue. Two, it's an absolute powerhouse and gets two of the best abilities in the goddamn game. Yes, I have drafted Salamence as my second pick. Now... <coughs> Salamence is just a powerhouse. I think he's got base 145 attack or something. Also a very solid, like, 100... And, I, I can't remember these guys off, by the way, off the top of my head. Some 100-something special attack and decent speed. Access to Dragon Dance. Obviously the Mega's Band. Uh, Earthquake. Fire Blast. Draco Meteor. Dragon Pulse. Dragon Claw. Outrage. Um, what else does it get? Does it get Iron Head? It might even get Iron Head. Um... There's just so many things Ments can do. It, it's so versatile. Moxie, you can just try and sweep with Moxie. On the complete flip side, you can run Intimidate, Roost. Um, I don't know what other moves there are, but Bulky, Dragon Dance. There must be a defensive one I can't think of, but... It's just so versatile. And for 10 million, for a tenth of my budget, I thought it was a complete steal. I don't, I'm surprised no one else picked it. Um... I mean, people went for instant power. I've gone for power of a lower tier, which is probably... I mean, I know it's a very low usage ranking in OU, but it's, I'm pretty sure it's really high in UU as well. So it's kind of stuck in limbo at the moment. I assume it'll probably go to BL um, in the future. Um, but yeah, I, I think I've got a really good deal on Ments. Um, people won't know what set I'm bringing. I can mix it up. It's brilliant. Um... Obviously, like I said, it gets special and physical. I mean, physical has probably got more of a presence, especially with Dragon Dance. But you obviously you need a uh, you need a time to set up. Now, I haven't got a fairy to block other dragon moves. I have got another Pokemon which can take them, which is fine. Um, but Choice Scarf Moxie is also a thing. But there's everyone has a fairy or a Steel type. No, everyone has a steel type. Not everyone has a fairy. I don't have a fairy, but obviously I can't attack myself. So it could be limited in that aspect, but there's there's potential. There is potential right there. So that was um, Salamence. Next up, I needed a bulky water type. Now, at this stage, uh, in the last... Um, what was it? I don't know. Within the last two drafts per team... Someone had taken Suicune, Milotic, and Vaporeon, and Politoed. So I was thinking, right, what? Oh, and for Alligator. I know it's not bulky, but it's still a water type. Um, well, actually, it's got base 100 defense. I thought, right, who could I pick? Um, oh, and Gyarados has already been selected at this point. So I was like, who is there? I was talking to Ellie, and Ellie just threw out the idea of Empoleon. Now... It didn't take much convincing, because Empoleon has God's gift that is steel typing. And such a great move pool. Stealth Rocks, Defog, Raw, Scald, Roost. I'm pretty sure it gets Roost. Um, Ice Beam, Flash Cannon. I could run an offensive set if I really wanted to. Um, not that I probably will. Oh, pardon me. He's my pr prime hazard remover. Slash... Stealth Rocker. Um, but he's also there. He's going to be important against fairies. That Mega Mawile doesn't seem like it can do too much to my Empoleon. Other than Sucker Punch. Sword Dance, Iron Head, 
play rough. Go ahead, use them. Won't scrape Empoleon. Um, I probably will, but I'm just so happy that no one picked Empoleon. It's got such a good, such a good role. I mean, I'm pretty sure people bought it as it was the closest thing. Or bought it to OU because it was the closest thing to a Greninja check. As you could get. And we banned the frog. No one wanted the frog in this tournament, by the way. Um, so I'm really glad I got Empoleon. It's got decent, uh, both defenses. It's got decent HP. It can hit as well. Scald is obviously nice. I needed something that can burn. I have got a, another Pokemon which can burn, which I'll uh, talk about later. But I'm really happy I got Empoleon. He's a really nice wall to have. Um, I have... <laughs> people have um, described me to have the sickest defensive uh, Pokemon in the draft. And it's mainly because of one Pokemon, which no one else picked, and it was running cheap. You, prob you already know, probably know who it is, but... No one else picked it, so I thought I would, just so no one else could have it. <laughs> the next Pokemon to partner Empoleon is Umbreon. Now, he is one of the two Pokemon which people did not like when I picked, because obviously Umbreon has one role, and it does that one role amazingly well. It is there just to fuck you off with Wish, Protect, Baton Pass, Toxic, Foul Play, uh, Heal Bell. It's got so many good versatile sets, but uh, ultimately they all do the same thing. They wear you the fuck out and he heals everyone else up with Wish. So, Umbreon is a great addition to my team. Um, especially when I reveal another one of my defensive Pokemon in a minute. Um, but at this point, I can see I have a fighting weakness between the two defensive Pokemon. Obviously, Ment can take the fighting. I would say Zam can take fighting, but let's face it, Zam does not appreciate physical attacks and most fighting moves are. If it was a Focus Blast, fair enough. Yum, yum, yum. It, it, it's not. It, it, I don't know if Alakazam could take a decently powerful fighting type move very well at all. So, I'm fi- oh, and um, yeah, I've already talked to Umbreon. That was my reasoning behind picking Umbreon, was just because it's such a great Pokemon. I need the Dark type to take up Ghost moves, because obviously Steel doesn't resist Ghost anymore. The fifth Pokemon is the one which has now labelled me as that guy. I was the guy who drafted Cresselia. Throw your hate towards me. No one else picked it. It was a bargain at £6 million. I, I mean, no, it's not my fault. It, it's really not my fault as to why people didn't pick it. But I have Cress. Cress, Empoleon, and Umbreon as a defensive line. I know I'm evil. But obviously, people know what Cress can do. It can run defensive sets. It, that's all it does run. <laughs> But so many different ones, it's hard to know what it's going to bring. It gets Psycho Shift, Toxic, Ice Beam, uh, Moon Blast, Psychic, Sub, Calm Mind, Thunder Wave, it, Trick Room. Um, what else can it get? Uh, <laughs> Giga Impact to prove, uh, to prove, to please Shroom Raver. He was telling me to make a banded Giga Impact one. No, thank you. It's just, and then obviously, oh, and, uh, what, the Healing Wish. And Moonlight as well, actually. This thing just doesn't die. Even, we were calking things. Um, Ellie's, obviously, this is, this is still a lot of damage. Ellie's Choice Banded Sheer Force Max Attack Darmanitan does a maximum of 75% to fully defensive Cress. That's fucking bulk. I obviously know I can't do too much in return. Well, I don't know. I haven't calced it. I don't know how much a recoil from Darm and a Psychic would do. I guess it would be enough to kill if it had already taken prior damage, especially with Stealth Rocks up. Um, that's it's scary. That's really scary. Um, so yeah, that's that. That's Cresselia. Everyone knows what Cresselia does. Now, at this point, I'm thinking, right, I need a hard hitter. I have Zam and Ments, yes, they're both fast hard hitters. But I wanted another, I wanted a, a properly physical Mon. Because obviously Ments can be special, Zam is special, um, Empoleon special, Umbreon <coughs> is nothing. 
Crest is special. It's actually looking at my team. I haven't got many physical presences. Oops. Um, I've gone for the Musketeer, probably the best Musketeer, Terrakion. Terrakion just puts holes into people's teams. I thought, right, when the draft gets a bit lower down, people are going to be running knockoff. And obviously, Terrakion can take that to advantage because it's fighting type, so it resists it. And it has not defined, what's it, justified. And I think it's also bug type moves and ghost type moves. All of, I think all of which are resisted. Maybe not ghost. Not sure. This thing could be a win condition because it, it's just so good. Choice scarf it. Pretty much outspeeds everything. Close combat. Stone edge if I want to be risky. Uh, I'm pretty sure it gets one of the sword moves. But I'm not sure if that's too viable or not. It gets quick attack. Earthquake. X scissor. Um... Does it get poison jab? I don't know. Could could be useful against them fairies, but swords dance sets, choice band sets, focus sash lead stealth rock sets. I mean, Terrakion is a great addition, and it's nothing to be reckoned with at all. It's just spooky. Um, so that's Terrakion's role. He's just gonna be there to punch physical holes into everyone's teams. I don't think anyone's going to appreciate it. I didn't actually think about Quick Attack too much because I was, I picked Pokemon later on in the draft to cover my priority, lack of priority. Um, thinking about now Terrakion does get Quick Attack which could actually come in handy. Um, may take some people by surprise too. I don't know how common it is. I've seen people use it before but we'll see. After Terrakion I decided I wanted someone who can uh, maintain momentum and help take down all these goddamn bulky water types. And there is also a rain team in this draft. So it's quite important that you either have a strong grass type or electric type. So I have gone and called up my buddy Raikou to come and join the Tottenham Hot Esper. And I'm really looking forward to this thing as well. I mean... Event, it can, you can run Aura Sphere with the event one, but that has to be a rash nature. Not that it's much of a problem, because it's still so goddamn good. It gets Aura Sphere. It, um, yeah, wait, let me, let me say this first. Like I said in the call yesterday, it does suffer from 4-move syndrome. So bad. It gets Aura Sphere, Extra Sensory, Shadow Ball, Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, slash Thunder, because of the rain team, uh, Sub, Calm Mind. Like, how do you choose out of them seven moves? I mean, you could run Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt, Calm Mind, Sub, and that that's pretty good. But then obviously you could run Specs and run Shadow Ball, Extra Sensory, Volt Switch, and Thunder, for example. I mean, and and Hidden Power as well. I mean, oh my God, the the thing is, it it can just it can just do damage, and it's awesome. I'm so happy I got Raikou. No one else picked it. Um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, Jolteon was drafted the previous round before that draft. Um, whatever electric types. Rotom Cut might have been taken at this point. It got taken at some point. After me, uh, there's Electivire and Zeb Striker because they needed cheap electric types. Oh, Raichu was also drafted quite early on, which is a nice addition for such a cheap price. So, Raichu, honestly, I'm happy that um, I managed to get him on the team. And he's going to punch, or he's going to... He's gonna just take things down. I hope. I hope. Goddamn Ellie's bulky team. Fuck's sake. And it'll take down Rise Vaporeon as well. Hopefully. And fucking Suicune as well. <clears throat> I hate that thing. Um. So now I have I have some firepower. And now I thought, all right, I have Terrakion potentially as a like a not a wall breaker, but he he's my physical one go to. I need a special go to. And I needed fire. And I also thought, right, I have two free, free Pokemon weak to fighting. I, uh, uh, an immunity would be nice. So, what fire and ghost type could I have possibly picked? I picked Chandelure as my eighth pick for the squad. For reasons like I've just said. It stops fire types, flash fire. It stops normal and fighting types. So, it's got three immunities. Stick an air balloon on that thing for some reason it has four. 
let's face it, nobody wants to take an overheat from a chandelier. Not even a defensive fire type will appreciate it. Not that they even want to bring it in, because obviously if you get predicted, go for Shadow Ball. That's going to do a metric fuck ton still. Because Chandelier is like base, what, 145 special attack? I know its speed's a bit lacking, but stick a Scarf on it and it's more than viable. So, that's a thing. I'm pretty sure it also gets Calm Mind. It can get Will-O-Wisp, which is brilliant. Honestly, um... It could work against Mega Mawile. He'll have to go for Sucker Punch. Nope. Wisp. Thank you very much. That's a, a completely crippled Mega Mawile. Unless he wants to start Swords Dancing up. That's fine. I can then attack him with a Fire Move and just kill him. That's fine. So, Chandelier is going to play a big role. There is... Um, obviously, Grass is known for bulkiness. What, we, what grass types we have been drafted? There has been a Meganium, a Tangrowth, a Rotom Mo. Uh, what other grass types? Celebi. Uh, Mega Venusaur. Shaman. Amoongus. Whimsicott. Uh, grass, grass. Roserade. Chestnut. Bulky... Grass types have been picked. Chandler is going to save my ass. I have that feeling. The fire moves are going to be so helpful. So now, I've got 8 powerhouses. I have 12 million, 13 million left. Who can I buy? I decided I need more bulk. Or well, I wanted to join in with the grassy, the grassy, the bulky grass types. And I was looking through the tiers. And there were two from the same family, which I thought, who do I pick? There was Tangler or Tangrove. In the end, I went Tangrove. Now, I know Tangler's physical defense is just fucking monstrous after an Violite. But I think Tangrove's physical defense, along with his 100 base HP, is monstrous. Obviously, he gets access to Leech Seed. Uh, I think Infestation? Toxic. Um, knock Off. Which is going to be important in this tier. Because the drafting rules have meant people have delved down into <coughs> NFE in some cases. Um, Giga Drain. Pretty sure it might get Sludge Bomb or something. It can just it can just stall. It can just stall. Physical flying fire come at me it just takes them and obviously regenerator as well is a glorious ability i can just switch out of there for my hp back it's it's wonderful um so i'm really glad i got tangrowth just if i have to turn to stall obviously <laughs> umbreon crest and tangrowth core oh my god i'm evil um i mean that thing could just win games on its own i imagine um so that was tangrowth and then my final pick, I couldn't afford an 11th team member. I wasn't allowed Wormpool. I wanted to sign Wormpool, but Raikwin wouldn't let me because it was 2 million, because it's PU and below, but it's a fucking Wormpool he wasn't willing to negotiate. My final Pokemon was based on the fact that the only... Well, at the time I said I have no priority. I obviously now realise I have Quick Attack on Terrakion, but it's not the best priority. So, only one of the Hitmon Pokemon had been selected. And that was the draft round before this one, which was Hitmon Top. So it was Hitmon Chan or Hitmon Lee. Both get Fake Out, both get Mac Punch, both get uh, Rapid Spin. Now, they both do jobs. They're both an RU. There's probably a reason why. But I decided to go for the more powerful option because I have a bulky core anyway in Tangrowth. Cress, Umbreon, and Empoleon, and I went for Hitmon Lee. Hitmon Chan has higher special defense. I'm pretty sure Hitmon Lee has higher attack and defense. Um, <coughs> Fake Out, Mock Punch is my priority right there. Unburden, Normal Gem. Normal Gem is the only gem in the game at the moment, so it works. Uh, I can use it to outspeed a lot of things. Mock Punch, cleaning up late game if I want to. If I can't kill it with a Mock Punch, obviously Unburden, as long as he doesn't use priority, 
I'm going to outspeed most things, because I don't think Hitmonlee is anything to laugh at speed-wise. Um, Hitmonlee is just a great mon. It gets blaze kick, high jump kick. Uh, what else? I don't know what else it gets. It probably get, it gets mock, punch, fake, mock punch, fake out, rapid spin. So many good moves. Foresight as well. Foresight is a great move. You cannot block it from spinning. I mean, and I'm pretty sure also, well, I'm pretty sure it might get Reckless as its other ability, but obviously Unburden. It's probably the one of choice. Them, they get really good abilities, do the Hitmon Pokemon. Intimidate, Technician, Iron Fist. Um, I don't know if Hitmon Chan actually gets a second ability. They might, they might get Steadfast or something. Um, Reckless and, um, Unburden. It's such good abilities. Um, but Hitmonlee had to be my final bit of business because, as I said, I wasn't allowed to sign Wormpool. I was legitimately going to sign a Wormpool up, bring him to a game, get a kill. I was going to do that. And towards the end of the season when we kind of, like, died down a bit if I couldn't win the league or something. But admittedly, I was going to bring a Wormpool. So I'm really upset that I blocked that. So let's start a petition. Let's get Wormpool into the Tottenham Hot Esper, shall we? That was my... That is my team. Um... I probably haven't gone into as much detail as you guys probably wanted, but I'm not really a person who thinks too much detail about Pokemon games. Um, but I feel like I've got a really good wide variance of typings, offensive and defensive power, utility, um, stall if I have to resort to it, setup mons, just pure power, a decent mega in Alakazam, Trace could be a massive massive factor in some games if I can trace the right ability it's oh man it's just so good oh, I just thought of Sap Zipper as well immune to Spore immune to Leech Seed oh that'd be glorious um so that's my team um I can't really think of much else to say make sure you go follow the Pokemon Premier League Twitter um you'll keep up to date with any other transfers transfers are not gonna happen now until after week one. Week one will start, uh, what is it, 16th today, it's 23rd. <coughs> From the 1st of April, I believe. Mainly because Raikou, uh, no, sorry. The 30th of March is the week where you'll expect to see some battling activity. Because, one, I think we all kind of agreed that we want time to play around with some of our Pokemon. See what we can do. And two, Raikwin's going away because it's his sister's wedding or brother's wedding or something. So, uh, blame him. Go go tweet hate at him, not me. So, expect battling to con commence in two weeks' time. In the meantime, I'll probably get some, I don't know, interviews. Maybe. Um, maybe my opinion on some Pokemon which weren't drafted. Amazingly, R Rotom <coughs> Wash wasn't drafted. Rotom Heat wasn't drafted. Gengar wasn't drafted. Azumarill wasn't drafted, Latias wasn't drafted, um, I'm going to say Donphan wasn't drafted, because Titos was, Titos didn't know whether he wanted Donphan or another Pokemon, and he ended up picking the other Pokemon, and I was like, why would you do that? <laughs> oh! Never mind. Um, th there's, there's some significant Pokemon not in the, the, the meta at the moment, but there is every chance that they could always come back and um, join the meta. Um, and I'm just really looking forward to doing this now. The, the drafting has built up the hype so much. Rye was talking about this yesterday. He was so hyped when we were doing it. We just went, I'm pretty sure on Saturday, we just had a constant string of it. And then we got to, like, Ethan. And then it just paused all day. <laughs> but, hey, it's not his fault. We had work. So, guys, if you are looking forward to the Pokemon Premier League, make sure you go check out the Twitter. Subscribe to everyone's channels. I'll put the, all their Twitters in the description. I've already mentioned this, but I'll say it again. Make sure you go check them out. I'm sure they all have YouTube channels in their Twitter bios, so go subscribe to them. I'm me and a couple of others who have captured cards are going to be recording all of the battles, not live, obviously for some people. Um, for myself, I might do them live, but people who don't, we've kindly agreed to uh, record the um, replay for them if they give them to us, and they can then narrate them themselves. So, I mean, if you want to keep up. With the games, that's the place to be. Obviously, the Twitter account will be tweeting them as they go. Not all the games will happen at the same time. We have a window. Um, I think it's in the... Oh, God, I don't know where it is. Um, I can't remember when it is, but there's a set period of days. I, think, I want to say it's like Wednesday to Friday, where battles... Or Wednesday to Saturday, where battles happen, and the transfer window is like Monday. 
So you have time to assess who you need, time to assess who your opponent is and whatnot. <coughs> um, so yeah, check all of them out, please. And subscribe to myself, obviously, if you haven't. This was my little baby, and hopefully it will grow into something awesome, which is what I really want it to do. So I've rambled long enough. This video is probably like 50 minutes or something. Oh my god. Thank you for watching, guys. And I look forward to seeing you back for some more. Okay, I'm yawning. Oh, it's quarter past ten and I'm yawning. I hope to see you back for some more Pokemon Premier League shenanigans soon. See you next time.